Hello guys, am I audible? Can you give me a quick yes? Good evening everyone. How are you all? If you are new to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, press the bell notification icon and yes, do hit like. I hope everybody is doing fine. I think currently holiday is going on, so I hope everybody is having fun, right? Hello. Yes. Hello, everyone. So what all things we discussed yesterday? What all things we discussed yesterday? Yeah. I hope everybody has enrolled into the uh, community dashboard. Uh, all the materials are given over there and uh, the dashboard is completely updated right we will probably start the session in three minutes is my voice fine everybody is able to hear me out msc is only for regression guys mean squared error cross entropy loss is for uh, multi-class classification problem and binary classification we have binary cross entropy right so hit the like uh, and yes, we'll be starting the session in another two minutes. I have my weapon ready with me. So I just need to keep on writing today. And today the session will be quite amazing because we are going to discuss about optimizers. Uh, we'll learn in completely in depth. Uh, let's wait for some time so that many people join. And yes, you can call your friends for this session because again, we are going to have an awesome session today. <laughs> Right. Perfect. Still people are joining, people are joining. Let's see. Keep on hitting like. And just the name of the topics that we have learned yesterday, guys, quickly. How many of you had attended yesterday's session? If you have not attended yesterday's session today, you will not be able to understand much. Uh, because the study session was also very much important okay so tell me what all topics we have covered yesterday yeah what all different topics we have covered yesterday uh sai kumar ready mostly will quote today uh, well, let's see you know today anyhow festival is going on we'll finish up this theory from tomorrow coding session will be going on you know where we'll be covering many things. CNN will be covered tomorrow, I guess, mostly. Tomorrow, ANN, CNN will get completed, anyhow. So, what are things we have discussed yesterday? Quickly, guys. Yes, perfect. Many people are saying it. So, let me share my other screen with you. I hope everybody is able to see my screen. So these were the topics uh, that were covered yesterday. Over here you can see this, uh, what all things we have discussed. We have discussed about forward propagation, backward propagation, chain rule of derivatives, vanishing gradient problem and loss functions, right? Uh, we also covered activation functions clearly and uh, we were able to understand the entire math. See how many maths like we had actually gone and written and all the materials is available in the community dashboard which is given in the link in the description box, okay? So today, uh, the agenda, let's see what all things we'll cover. Uh, shall I remove this? I don't like to remove this because uh, I know like how much effort it takes usually to write this, you know. So anyhow, uh, let's go ahead uh, to remove it and let's talk about the day three. So day three, deep learning session, we are going to discuss about this today. Okay day three deep learning what all topics agenda what all things we are going to cover okay the first thing is very much important which is called as optimizers right optimizers are very much important in the back propagation to understand how the weights are getting updated and there are different different types of optimization uh what all different types we'll be learning today so obviously we have covered gradient descent okay you'll understand gradient descent then we have 
something called as SGD, which is called as stochastic gradient descent. Stochastic gradient descent. Third thing that we are going to cover is something called as mini batch SGD, stochastic gradient descent. Fourth topic that we are basically going to cover <coughs> SGD with momentum. Okay, so that part we are going to covering uh, in the third. Uh, after this, in this, uh, we will basically be covering SGD with momentum. Then we have something called as Adagrad. So Adagrad, adaptive gradient. We're going to cover this. Okay. And the sixth one uh, that we are going to basically cover is something called as RMS prop. And finally, we will try to see Adam optimizer, which is currently the best optimizer, which is going on in the market. Many people use this, right? Along with this, uh, we are also going to cover what is, what is batch, what is epochs, what is iterations. We are definitely going to cover all these things. Okay. So this is the agenda of this session. Let's see whether we'll be able to cover this. And then after this, we, if we get time, we'll also be solving an ANN practical problem. And uh, if we don't get time, don't worry. Tomorrow we are going to cover the ANN and probably the CNN part. Okay. Perfect. Perfectos. Okay. So quickly hit like and then we'll probably start. Okay. Just give me a thumbs up, heart symbol, something so that we'll start the session. Till then, I will start this one. Uh, so first optimizer, obviously we have seen about something called as gradient descent. Okay. Now in gradient descent, we know what is the main weight updation formula in the back propagation. Weight updation formula in the back propagation. That is nothing but weight old, sorry weight new is equal to weight old minus learning rate of derivative for loss with respect to derivative of w old okay so this is the first uh, equation i hope everybody knows about this because since we are discussing it from yesterday so everybody should be well known with this specific thing and whenever we talk about gradient descent, we know that what we specifically have, we have in our X and Y axis with respect to W, we will basically try to see the loss or cost function. And we know that what happens, we get this kind of gradient descent, right? And this point that is basically this, this is my global minima, right? And, uh, we have also understood what is the importance of this specific learning rate. This specific learning rate that also we have understood. Okay. And uh, whenever we have any kind of points over here, what happens is that either we can increase the weight or decrease the weight. But our main aim is basically to come to the global minima. Now, let's go ahead and take one step ahead and try to understand different things. Okay. Now, let's, let's say, I have already told you the difference between loss and cost function, right? Now, what part we are specifically discussing? Let's say I have my input feature. This is my hidden layer and this is my output layer. So if I'm connecting this all dots, okay. If I'm connecting this all dots, this becomes my hidden layer. This becomes my input layer. So this is my input layer. This is my hidden layer one. And this is my output layer. You can have any number of layers. That is not a problem. So in forward propagation, what we do, we multiply it by the input weights, and then we apply an activation function. And finally, over here, I get Y hat. And then we go ahead and define our loss function. One of the loss function is nothing but mean squared error. So I can basically write one by 
टू एन ओके यस्टरडे वेन आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द Uh, in the previous session, when I was discussing about the loss function, at that point of time, you know, I used to write one by two, okay, but I missed that n part, okay. So please do make sure that you write n. Then i is equal to one to n, y minus y hat whole square. So if you talk about this, this is basically called as mean squared error, okay. So this is nothing but it is a mean squared error, okay. This is the loss function that is basically getting applied, okay. then uh, in the backward propagation our main aim is that we should basically update all this weight so what 1 w1 whatever weights you are basically having over here w2 w3 w4 we need to update this weights um, for updating this weights to minimize this loss function we use optimizers now one example of the optimizers that we specifically use uh, this is called as uh, this gradient descent optimizer now in gradient descent optimizers you know what we do is that we pass and first of all before that let's understand what is epoch okay so you need to get an idea about epoch now what exactly is epoch epoch okay i i can call this as cost function okay this as cost function because since i'm passing n data points now what does this epoch mean epoch basically means whenever i do one forward propagation and one backward propagation this combines and says that okay we have basically passed one epoch okay one epoch so if i have let's say if i have million records million records in my data set okay if i specifically have million records in my data set now if in the forward propagation at a time i'm actually getting i'm giving million records at a time i'm giving million records after giving i'm getting y hat and i'm finding out the loss okay loss i'll not say loss but at least i'll say cost function let me remove this okay suppose if i'm trying to find out cost function now when i'm finding out cost function the formula some becomes something like this right now that basically means i to the 1 that is summation of i is equal to 1 to million okay so million this n will basically be million okay so in basically what we are doing in the forward propagation we are doing million different calculation of different inputs and weights because there are million data points and at a at a batch we are taking million data points and we are doing the forward propagation right and we are finding out the y hat and then we are trying to calculate the cost function okay so in the backward propagation then what will happen all the weights will get updated and this all weights will be getting updated based on this loss now understand what is the disadvantage with respect to gradient descent if when we are passing million records just imagine million records so the first disadvantage that i would like to talk about is basically is basically that if you are passing million records definitely you require a huge ram to load that records right so resource extensive task it is so the task is very resource extensive you require huge ram to accommodate million records in every epoch right so huge it is like huge ram size at least you will require again for parallel processing you also may be requiring gpus because million records processing is basically happening right it is obviously fast we will be able to reach to global minimum but just to run this we really need to have a big system right so this is the major major disadvantage try to understand why i'm saying major disadvantage right over here you can clearly understand that i cannot like if i am using million records at every epoch right how much resources i will be requiring right so this is a major disadvantage with respect to gradient descent okay so what do we do can we tweak this optimizer this is an optimizer this gradient descent is basically my optimizer can i use some other optimizer which can make sure that with little bit number of resources also i will be able to work nicely okay so for that the second part that we specifically discuss about is something called as stochastic gradient descent stochastic stochastic gradient descent now in stochastic gradient descent what we do let's say that okay fine we have million records we have million records in every epoch which is a combination of forward and backward propagation let's say in the epoch 1 i just pass one record 
that's it i pass one record i calculate the y hat and then then i calculate the loss and then i update the weights right this step is basically updating the weights now if i have 1 million records and in every epoch in every epoch like let's say inside this epoch i'm passing only one record still there are so many there still there are millions of records that is left so when i pass one record in the forward propagation in the backward propagation i update the weight this will basically called as iteration 1 now we are dividing this inside the epoch based on the data points we are dividing it so this will now become iteration 1 now in the iteration 2 we will pass the second data point for doing the forward and the backward propagation so now here i will pass the second record and this will be my iteration 2 right so like this how many number of iteration i will have how many number of iteration just just a normal guess since there are million records okay since there are million records it will be going till i million iteration right million iteration million iteration if we just pass one one record so in every epoch we have to pass through million iteration if you are just providing one record at a time and like this we usually run for many number of epochs when we are training this deep learning model right when we are training at least we run with 100 epochs i'll be talking about this early stopping and all but just let's say we are running it for 100 mil 100 epochs so in every epoch million iteration just imagine for 100 epochs how many millions iteration will become simple it is 100 million iterations right in this in this step in stochastic gradient descent you are making sure that fine I will not require that much RAM. No, I don't require that much RAM because I'm just passing one record at a time. But what is the major disadvantage? Major disadvantage is that the convergence that is basically happening will be very slow. The convergence will be very slow. Will be very very slow. I hope everybody agrees with this. The convergence will be very very slow. because at every time i'm passing one record then again back propagation then again weights are have updating you know so the convergence will be very very slow this is the major disadvantage with stochastic gradient descent okay so now researcher will not keep quiet okay someone has come up with this he has written phd is given he's got a phd now he has written a research paper there is some problems in this now how do we fix this then we go with the next optimizer the third optimizer that we specifically have that optimizer is basically called as batch size let me take the full name over here mini batch sgd mini batch stochastic gradient descent now what is this mini batch stochastic gradient descent let's let's understand it in a better way okay let's let's try to understand okay here what more problem the time complexity will also be very high the time complexity will also be also be high obviously it is solving the resource constraint but time complexity will still be high. okay now what happens in mini batch sgd let's understand okay now in mini batch sgd in mini batch sgd instead now see suppose if i have 1 million records now instead of just giving one record at a time what i will do i will set up a batch size let's say my batch size is now 1000 now if my batch size is 1000 that basically means in every epoch that i do forward and backward propagation let's say this is epoch 1 i give 1000 records obviously because in every batch size i give means in every epoch i give or inside a every epoch i give 1000 records let's say i'm giving 1000 records over here in the forward propagation and backward propagation okay then total number of this will be my iteration one right this will be my iteration one okay so how many number of iteration will i have to do just divide million by 1000 then this will get cut this will get cut this will get cut so that basically means now in the second iteration i'll give another 1000 So in iteration two, I'll give another thousand data points. So like this, now I will be able to reduce this number of iteration to just thousand. 
I will be able to basically just do till the number of iteration that is thousand. And with respect to all these things, my data points will get covered. Now this looks a better approach because why? Because here now it is not that much resource intensive. We have removed this resource intensive. The second point is that convergence will be better when compared to the will be better. And time complexity will also improve. Time complexity will improve. I hope everybody agrees with this three point. And this is what we are able to do with the help of mini batches JD. Hmm. Okay. Now let me just show you through diagrammatically. Okay. How will my gradient descent look like? So suppose this is my gradient descent. Let's say this one. Okay. My aim is to basically come to this global minima. Global minima. Okay. My main aim is basically to come to this global minima. With the, with the help of, let's say my first data point is over here. Okay. With the help of gradient descent. First, we'll understand gradient descent. With the help of gradient descent, since we are passing millions record at one time, the convergence will happen like this. Okay, the convergence will happen this, like this with gradient descent. But there are problems. What are the problems with gradient descent? We have written over here, right? We have written over here. The problem is that it will be resource extensive. We don't have a high RAM to upload all the millions of record at one time. If you have a huge machine, this will work. You know, the convergence will go down like this. That is fine. If we use stochastic gradient descent, if we use stochastic gradient descent, now here we are giving record by record, right? Just one data point. So how my record will go with respect to one data point? Let's say it will go like this. It will jump like this. It will jump like this. This is with respect to stochastic gradient descent. The green one is basically with respect to stochastic gradient descent. The yellow one is basically my gradient descent. The stochastic gradient descent, why it will have so much zigzag? Because it is only taking a single data point and it is updating the weights. So because of this, so because of this, what will happen? So many different, different uh, iterations or so many different, different ways, the movement will happen. And this will basically happen because of SGD. Now with mini batch SGD, what will happen? This, this zigzag movement will be less. It will move like this. This zigzag movement will be less. It will move like this and we will be able to reach the global minima. But still, this zigzag movement is there. And this zigzag movement is basically called as noise. This is called as noise. Which is having the highest noise? Obviously, SGD is having the highest noise. Gradient descent is having the least noise. And if I talk about mini batch SGD, which is this white line, mini batch SGD, mini batch SGD, this has very minimal noise, but it has noise, right? The highest noise is basically with SGD. If we have noise, then it will definitely take time to basically come to the global minimum. Let's, let's consider I want to climb a mountain. Suppose this is my mountain. Okay. I want to reach this peak. Okay. I want to reach this peak, right? If a person is starting from here, right? What will happen if a person goes in this straight direction? He will be able to reach fast. What if the person moves something like this from here to here to here to here to here? It will take time to reach to the peak. And what if the person just iterates or moves in this direction in this way, like this zigzag movement? Then he will be able to reach better than this particular green person, right? It is that we have to reach this point. This point over here is global minima. Okay, so I hope everybody is able to understand. Okay, and you have understood that over here, mini batch SGD gives us less noise, but there is definitely noise. Now, one very important thing still, there is noise. How do we remove the noise? How do we remove the noise? This is the next question. How? How do we go ahead and remove the noise? Now, in order to remove the noise, we use a concept which is called as momentum. We'll discuss about this momentum in completely depth. So because of this, we have our next optimizer, which is called as, which is called as 
SGD with momentum. Obviously, this SGD, we are talking about mini batch SGD. Okay. Mini batch SGD with momentum. Now, what this momentum will do is that it will smoothen this journey. It will smoothen this journey. It will make it smoother. It will make it smoother and reduce the noise and try to come to the global minima. Okay. It will just smoother. How it will smoothen? I'll just talk about it. There is a separate maths for that, which is called as moving average. And with the help of this exponential moving average, we will be able to smoothen this journey and it will be able to reach the global minima efficiently. So quickly, let's understand. I hope everybody is able to understand. If you are able to understand, please give a like, say some symbols, say thumbs up so that I'll be able to get an energy that you are able to understand with respect to whatever I'm teaching. And I hope my handwriting is perfectly fine. And I hope I write a book one day because I love writing these things, you know, and I'm, I'm having fun writing this. So I don't create any PPTs. So just let me know whether you are able to enjoy the video. You are able to understand things or not, right? Just let me know. I'll wait for some time, but just let me know whether you are able to understand or not. Okay, perfect. Amazing. Many people are able to understand over here. Now, with respect to SGD with momentum, how do we make sure that we are able to smoothen the entire process of reaching the global minima? How we are able to do this? Okay. In SGD in momentum, we bring a very important concept which is called as exponential weighted average or I can also say moving average but here we'll just focus on weighted average. Let's say we are focusing on this exponential weighted average. So what is this concept and this concept is also used in time series. Some of the models like Arima model, Arma model. We specifically use these things. I hope everybody have heard about this uh, Arima model, Arma model and all. Okay. So let's understand what exactly is this exponential moving average. I hope everybody knows the weight updation formula. So weight updation, I'll again write over here. W new is equal to W old minus learning rate of derivative of loss with respect to derivative of W old. And similarly, bias, bias old is equal to, sorry, bias new is equal to bias old minus learning rate of derivative of loss with respect to derivative of bias old, right? This two formula, everybody knows it since I've written many number of times, okay? And uh, it should be very much clear to you. Now, let me do one thing. Let me change this equation a little bit, okay? And let it me let me write it in a new format, okay? And probably this format will make sense since we are doing exponential weighted average. So over here, I'm basically going to write wt plus one, or let me write wt is equal to instead of writing new, I'll write wt, and here I'll write wt minus one minus learning rate of derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt minus one. So this is also the same thing because t basically means current time. T minus one basically means new uh, previous time, right? Similarly over here, W new basically means the current weight, updated weights and W old is the older weight, okay? So I will just try to change this in this particular way. The reason why I'm doing this, I'll just let you know because we really need to understand what is this exponential weighted average, okay? Now let's go ahead and understand about the exponential weighted average. Now in order to understand about exponential weighted average, I'll take a very simple example. I will take a very simple example. Okay. So what does this exponential weighted average say that? Let's say I have data set for time T1, T2. I have some values. Let's say I have some values. Okay. For time T1, T2, T, T4 like this till Tn. Okay. For time T1, the value is A1. For time T2, the value is A2. The time T3, the value is A3. This is A4 and like this it is An. Okay. So let's say I have this all time over here. Okay. And uh, 
uh, I've just recent written the values over here and uh, you'll be able to see it. Uh, now, the next step, what does this exponential weighted average say? Okay, let's say, okay, and we'll try to understand everything will make sense. Okay, now here I will basically write, let's say I'm saying that the value of T1 at time T1 is basically A1. Okay, and suppose if I go ahead and try to say the value of time T2, and I have to make sure that I perform an exponential weighted average on T1 and T2. I want to, I want to create a weighted average between these two time series data. Let's see because why, why this is very important because with this uh, help, I can also do forecasting. Okay, forecasting. Now in order to do the forecasting, I should also be dependent on the previous timestamp values like A1. Okay. Now, if I really want to apply the exponential weighted average, I will be considering this too and I will assign a weight. Now, how I can assign a weight? Here I will be saying beta, will, which will be my weight, weight values, I will say multiplied by Vt1 plus 1 minus beta multiplied by what is the value in A2? It is basic. Sorry, what is the value in T2? It will basically be A2. Now here what we are doing, I'll just make you understand. Let's say my beta, beta value is a basically a hyperparameter. This is a hyperparameter which will actually help us to perform uh, this weighted moving average or weighted exponential uh, moving average. This beta tells us on which value we should focus more. Okay, on which value we should focus more, whether we should give importance to the current timestamp value or whether we should give the importance to the previous timestamp value. Suppose if I say my beta value is ranging between 0 to 1, it usually ranges between 0 to 1. Let's say for the current instance, my beta value is 0.95. If my beta value is 0.95, then what I will do? I will basically write 0.95 multiplied by Vt1 plus 0 0.05 multiplied by A2. Now, in this particular case, since I have assigned 0.95 as my beta value, I am giving more importance to my Vt1 value. That is my previous timestamp value. Because if I replace Vt1, I am going to get A1. And to the current timestamp value, I am giving less importance. So, let's say if I plot this, if I plot this, right? A1 and A2. Okay, A1 is here, A2 is here. Let's say. Now, if I smoothen this, if I smoothen this, right, my smoothening will happen. My, my, my smoothening will basically happen and more control will be given to the previous point instead of the current point. Okay. And that is how this smoothening process will go ahead, right? Because we want to smoothen it. We want to smoothen it. So here, if I draw a new diagram for you, what we are trying to do, suppose this is my gradient descent. Okay. So initially, let's say my point was here. Okay, my point was here. The A1, the T1 point was here. The T2 point, let's say it is here. T2 point is over here. Now, if I assign beta onto this, instead of going in this direction, it will now go in something in this direction. Okay, like this. And then the T3 will get controlled, then T4 will get controlled like this, and then finally it will reach the global minima. So here we are removing the noise removing the noise and is smoothening the curve we are smoothening the curve right we are smoothing the curve. so i said beta is basically a hyperparameter okay now similarly if i say what is vt3 then if i write vt3 then this will basically become beta multiplied by vt2 plus 1 minus beta multiplied by a3 because vt3 the value at time 3 is a3 and this VT2 will get replaced by this entire value, right? So like this, for every timestamp, we can assign a hyperparameter with beta so that this smoothening process will actually happen, okay? So can I get a quick yes if everybody is able to understand? Yeah, smoothly everybody is able to understand like this exponential weighted average, right? I hope everybody is able to understand. So, where do I apply this? Where do I apply this? Now the question rises, where do I apply this weighted uh, exponential weighted average? Right? And it's very simple. Where do we apply it? Just a random guess. We basically apply this in the derivative of loss with respect to derivative of weights. Now, what I will do is that I will just go ahead and write exponential 
weighted average is nothing but here I'm just going to take this and now I'll write an equation, new equation, WT minus 1 minus learning rate. Instead of writing derivative of loss with respect to derivative of WT minus 1, I will just write VDW. Now, what is this VDW? Let me write it down. VDW basically means it will be the weighted average with respect to VDW is nothing but value of the derivative. Okay. Beta multiplied by VDWT minus 1 plus 1 minus beta multiplied by derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt minus 1. That's it. And here we are bringing this exponential curve initially. Now, since we bring this, we definitely know that what is going to happen over here? The smoothening of the curve will basically happen. Okay. With the help of this. VDW basically means, uh, and this will be T, right? We did the, the value of the derivative at time t is nothing but beta multiplied by value derivative of, of the previous uh, value of derivative by time t minus 1 plus 1 minus beta multiplied by derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt minus 1. Okay. So I hope you are getting an idea how we are able to smoothen the curve in an efficient way. Okay. And this is basically my exponential moving average. Okay, and now if I probably draw my curve, what all problems we are solving? Suppose if this is my gradient descent, I will basically start from here and I will be getting a smoothened version to reach the global minima. And here, what all problems we are fixing? We are reducing the noise. We are reducing the noise. Uh, this will also be working for mini batch and it will also be having a quicker convergence okay i hope you are able to understand if you are able to understand please hit like provide some symbols so that i can see uh, how things are actually going ahead okay so nice stories right guys this all see the best way to learn something is just like remember the story how things goes there are some problem because of that problem something else will come and this will keep on coming. Today, if you really want to do, uh, do a PhD, find the loopholes in the previous things that are there, create a new one in front of you, and that is done. Okay? So, having fun, everyone. Yes? Okay. So just a quick recap, just a quick recap everyone, okay, what all things we have learnt. So first thing, we learnt about something called as gradient descent. What did we do in gradient descent? You understood the problem, we cannot send millions of record. So I have to definitely go with gradient, I cannot go with gradient descent itself, right? Uh, so there is some problems, uh, obviously millions of record, resource intensive, everything, you know, in interview also, they may ask you this. Okay. They may see you that, okay. If there is so much of noise in probably my gradient descent, what do you think I should do? You say, I'll just say that trying to bring that smoothening factor in your optimizer. That's it. Right. So easily. They'll not ask you the equations. But the reason I'm telling you the equations because you should be able to understand because at the end of the day, if I'm teaching, everybody should be able to understand. That is my main aim. Okay. Then after gradient descent, what did we learn? We learned about stochastic gradient descent. Then the third one is something called as mini batch SGD. Right. The fourth one that we actually focused on. Okay. Uh, this is basically uh, SGD with momentum. Okay. Now the fourth one that we are basically going to discuss is something called as adagrad. Okay. So here I'm specifically going to write Adagrad. And now in Adagrad, uh, this is basically adaptive gradient descent. Okay. Now what is this adaptive gradient descent? Let's discuss about this. Okay. 
and to discuss about this let me again draw the gradient descent curve okay so till now whatever weight updation formula we have seen right what is the thing over there in the weight updation there is one important parameter which is called as learning rate now this learning rate you know helps us to converge or it helps us to maintain the speed of the convergence right but understand one thing okay when we move towards the global minima don't you think and this is right now fixed right fixed in every algorithm in every optimizers this is right now fixed can we change the learning rate in such a way that let's say my data point is somewhere here initially my learning rate should be high and as we go towards the global minima the learning rate should decrease so can we do this because researchers will not keep quiet they have to do the phd right so they will come up with something else right and we have to learn those things and again i salute all the researchers it is not a joke uh, they have created all these amazing things you just go and see the research paper that they have written you know sometimes you'll not even understand the equations that's smart they are okay so over here i have to make sure this this adaptive adaptive is the word right my learning rate is fixed but i want to make sure that i also change my learning rate value now how can i do that that is what we are going to discuss now right now you everybody knows about this weight updation formula so again i will write it down the weight updation formula which is your favorite equation i guess so wt with wt minus 1 minus learning rate of derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt minus 1 okay so i'm just going to write like this now in adaptive gradient descent okay in adaptive gradient descent we replace this learning rate with something else okay if i really want to make right now the previous state is that this learning rate is fixed i want to make this instead of fixed i want to make this adaptive adaptive i have to make this changes as we approach the global minima so what i will do is that i will replace this entire value with something else now what will i replace it with i will replace it with completely like this see w of t w of t minus 1 instead of writing running rate i will write eta this is a kind of symbol which is called as eta instead of this i'm going to write this and remaining all will be same remaining all will be same derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt minus 1 okay now let me just encircle this quickly okay now what is this what is this value this value this value is basically i'll write it as n of eta is equal to learning rate divided by and here i'm going to write a formula which is called as alpha t plus epsilon okay now i'll explain each and every uh, parameter that is basically getting used okay each and every parameter that is basically getting used we'll try to understand okay now the first thing why this epsilon is there epsilon is actually there and this will basically be a small number because to avoid divide by zero condition if alpha of t is 0 then this divided by this 0 is basically an infinity so in order to avoid this we are actually adding this small number which is called as epsilon so that this numerator sorry denominator never becomes zero okay this is the first step so i hope everybody understood about epsilon okay so this is a small number now the next thing is that what is this alpha of t now here what i will be doing is that alpha of t i will write a new equation i'll say summation of i is equal to 1 to t t basically means current time stamp okay current time stamp of that specific weight and this will be defined as derivative of loss with respect to derivative of w t whole square okay with respect to this time stamp i'm doing the summation of all the previous weights also and i'm also doing squaring okay now when we bring this equation what will happen okay my main aim is that my learning rate after it has started to train you know we should keep on decreasing it as we reach the global minima right we need to decrease it 
right we need to decrease it now focus on the numerator that is alpha of t don't you think this alpha of t whatever formula i've used you know as we go with respect to different different e value right with different different timestamp value don't you feel let's say in t is equal to 1 if my learning rate is 0 0.01 at t is equal to 2 this may also get reduced why it will get reduced i'll talk about it let's 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 write it down okay i'm writing it down over here and similarly at t is equal to 3 this will get reduced to 0 0.002 let's say okay let's 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 say i'll i'll prove it why this value will go down over here you will be able to see that this derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt as the timestamp goes on this value will keep on increasing because we are doing the summation right we are doing the summation and this value is getting divided over here right since the value is increasing at every timestamp this value we are going to insert over here and obviously because of this this entire equation don't you think it will decrease because we are dividing this with this I hope everybody is agreeing with this, right? So whenever we divide this value continuously, because with respect to every timestamp, this value is going to increase because alpha of t is nothing but the summation of i is equal to 1 to t derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt. Okay. Yeah, it should be 0 0.05. Okay. So because of that, you will be seeing that as we reach near the global minima, as we reach near the global minima, this value will keep on decreasing, right? And through that specific way, we are bringing adaptiveness in the learning rate. And this time, the learning rate will never be fixed since it will be decreasing as we move towards the global minima. Okay. So this is the only change that is basically coming on the learning rate. Okay. This is very super important to understand. Okay. So just give me a quick yes if you are able to understand things or not. I hope you are loving it. I hope you are able to understand. Till then, let me drink the water. Timestamp basically means <laughs> the weights at that particular timestamp like w new w old right so w new basically means w t w old basically means w t minus 1 right now we will go to the next step still over here you see that we forgot to add this smoothening thing the exponential weighted average right exponential weighted average is also not there for learning rate also you see the value you know if this is increasing by a very huge number because this will increase in a deep neural network this will be increasing this this entire term will be increasing by a huge number okay so because of this the learning rate change that may happen will also become negligible at some times so how do we prevent that this should not be a huge change See, understand over here something, right? When we are dividing by this, right? There may be situation that alpha t can become a huge number. Huge number also, right? In a deep neural network. We keep on adding things. We keep on adding derivative of loss with respect to derivative of wt, right? With respect to timestamp. Now, because of this, what happens? This n theta, right? It will, there will be a negligible change, right? So, in order to prevent this, we are going to go and understand the next uh, optimizer, which is called as added delta. So, here we are going to discuss about added delta and RMS prop. Almost both, both these optimizers has similar functionality. I hope you understood that. What is the problem over here? The problem is that if we keep on updating this, this value will keep on getting higher as iteration will happen as more and more weights will get updated. And when I am trying to place it over here and when I am dividing with this learning rate, which is already a small number, if the learning rate is 0 0.01, this will already be a small number, small number, right? And this n of n uh, theta of i, this when I am replacing over here, suppose if this is a very small number, hardly the previous weights and the current weights will change. This will approximately be equal to the same wt will approximately be equal to wt minus 1 because of that so we also have to make sure that this alpha of t does not reaches a very huge value 
So how do we do this? How do we make sure that this alpha of t is never so big? Now in this particular case, I will again take this eta value and instead of writing alpha of t, I will divide by another number which is called as SDW plus epsilon. I hope everybody understood what is the importance of epsilon. But let's understand what SDW becomes. Now SDW is nothing but here we are going to apply exponential weighted average again so that we control this value. Okay, so here we are going to basically apply exponential weighted average. How do I apply exponential weighted average? Initially, let's say that we will initialize SDW as zero. Okay, then with respect to T, let's say this is T minus one. Now with respect to T, I will say that beta multiplied by SDW T minus one plus one minus beta multiplied by derivative of loss derivative of loss with respect to derivative of w whole square we understood right see what is the thing over here we know that alpha t formula is derivative of loss with respect to derivative of w t whole square right and we are also making sure that we keep it over here and this will also be t minus 1 right we are we are making sure that we keep it over here but now it is controlled because of this exponential weighted average now suppose if my beta value let's say my beta value is 0.95 then what SDWT will happen? This will be 0.95 multiplied by SDWT minus 1 plus 0 0.05 with derivative of loss with respect to derivative of WT minus 1 whole square. Now we are controlling this with this parameter. Now this will never increase or bump up by a very large value. It is, it'll, it is going to definitely increase by a smaller value. I hope everybody is able to understand, right? So I hope everybody is getting this idea what I'm trying to say. Here the problem was that we were not able to control this increase. But here we are definitely being able to control because of this beta value, right? One minus beta value. And this will be the current value with respect to the previous value, whatever zero will assign. But we are making sure that this will always be in the control state. Now, when this will be in the control state, obviously, there will be a slow decreasing of this learning rate value also, and we will be able to reach the global minima, right? Are you understanding these things or not, guys? Just tell me, okay? It's just like a story. Now, we have brought exponential weighted average into picture, right? Why? Because we really want to control this, okay? So SDW is a new term that I'm actually using. This SDW is nothing but initially at time t minus one or time t, it will be zero. When we go to the next timestamp, it will, we'll take the zero, we'll apply over here, but we really need to control this value, control. You have to control this value, how it increases, okay? And that is what we are doing with the help of exponential weighted average, okay? So I hope everybody is able to understand. Now, finally, see, everything is added, but still we again give, because here also my equation will look like this. See, my, my weight updation formula still has this derivative of loss with respect to derivative of WT minus one, right? And whenever I have this smoothening will not happen. See smoothening, what is the equation? If I talk about smoothening here, I'm just saying that if I want to bring SGD with momentum, over here, you can see that my smoothening equation will have VDW. But here, what I'm using, I'm using derivative of loss with respect to derivative of WT minus one. Still, I have removed, basically the researchers in adaptive gradient descent and in Adelta and RMS prop, they are not doing the smoothening still. The smoothening is missing, right? Because see, in SGD momentum, what was the equation that we saw? VDW. Now, this VDW and this SDW should be combined together. If we combine together, then it solves both the problem. Okay, I'm going to again write this out quickly for you all. Let me rub it. Okay. Let me rub it quickly. Okay. So what will happen if I apply a beta value of 0.95? So my SDWT for the current timestamp will be 0.95 multiplied by SDWT minus 1 plus 0 0.05 
multiplied by derivative of loss with respect to derivative of t minus 1 whole square. Now we are controlling this increase with this, right? Now we bought this HDW concept over here, but we left the momentum. The researcher left the smoothening momentum, right? Over here. See, nowhere the smoothening momentum is present, right? So where that is, that is basically present over here. In the SGD momentum, we discussed, right? In SGD with momentum, we brought this factor, that is exponential weighted average. Now, the next one that we are going to discuss, we are going to combine this exponential weighted average. And then we are also making sure that we have this adaptive learning rate. And when we combine both of them, we are going to get something called as Adam Optimizer. So in Adam Optimizer, what we do? We combine momentum along with the RMS prop intuition that we have understood. What is the intuition that we understood over here? We made sure that here we have adaptive learning rate. Adaptive learning rate. When we combine both of this, it becomes Adam optimizer. Right now, this is the best optimizer. Yes, there are different, different variants of this optimi optimizer like Adam Max. There is different, different one, right? But right now, everybody is using the Adam optimizer. Okay, every everybody, most of the people are basically using Adam optimizers. And this is right now currently the best optimizer, which also researchers basically say. So here we are going to combine both this concept. Now, what will happen is that I will be having VDW and I will be having SDW. And along with this, whatever I explained, right, it also gets applied to bias because bias will also get updated, right? So same formula will get applied. So for bias also, instead of writing VDW, I will write now VDB. Then here I will say HDB. Initially, this all values will be zero. Now, how my, how my equation will look like, my weight updation equation will look like WT, WT minus one min, uh, minus eta. And then here I will be having VDW. Okay, this is for the weight updation formula. For bias updation formula, what will happen? Bt, Bt minus 1, minus eta, and here I will be having Bdb. Eta, everybody knows. What is eta? Learning rate divided by root of SDW plus epsilon. Right? Everybody knows this. What is VDW? VDW also everybody knows. VDW is nothing but beta multiplied by, see the formula up, what I have actually written over here. Beta multiplied by WT, VDW T minus 1. So, multiplied by VDW T minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus beta multiplied by derivative of loss with respect to derivative of WT minus 1. That's it. I am just combining this both equation. And whatever things we have learnt it, we are just combining it over here in front of you itself. And this will also become, what will be VD, uh, BT? This is nothing, beta multiplied by VDBT minus 1 multiplied by, sorry, this will be addition. Just a second. This will be 1 minus beta plus, and this will also be plus. 1 minus beta derivative of loss with respect to derivative of bt minus 1. That's it. Now I have made you too much super smart. You know learning eta what it becomes. You know this, you know this, you combine this and this is your new weight updation formula for Adam optimizer. This will make sure that what all factors will get covered. What all factors? It is solving the problem of smoothening it is forming following the problem of smoothening it is making sure that the learning rate becomes adaptive learning rate becomes adaptive and this is the story that we wanted to achieve if you find some flaws also you start writing a research paper right and there are different variants adam x n adam and all right I hope everybody is able to understand guys. I hope you're liking this session or not. Just let me know. I know it is too much maths, but I really wanted to teach in this specific way. I want to create an example in front of you. 
okay just imagine in hardly one hour time we have covered optimizers Sim just imagine how much time researchers may have taken so did you understand everything yes or no can i get a quick yes did you have fun or are you like like after learning this much you are saying krish i want to kill you no guys don't tell me i want to kill you krish okay hit like okay so we'll keep the session today to this much uh, tomorrow we'll start the ann practical uh i love this always i love this kind of sessions okay um i love this session if you tell me to take tomorrow also any time uh, when i see this kind of equation there is a different kind of energy that comes inside me okay so uh this is it uh, tomorrow if you find like many people ask me people who do masters and phd krish what type of research research should i do find out a new optimizer that's it find out a new optimizer you'll be able to do exceptionally well okay exceptionally well so in adam optimizer we are combining both our momentum and rms prop and we are making sure that that smoothing factor and adaptive learning rate comes into picture combine them and give you the best thing that is available right so i hope i have made it like a story for everyone okay uh, and uh, yes this was it from my side tomorrow uh, i'm a little bit tired so i'll keep the session till here tomorrow we will we'll cover both ann and cnn okay and and cnn will try to cover everything okay uh yes this was it for my side uh, have a great day just one request guys hit like share with everyone i don't see people sharing it in linkedin and all please share it tell them to join the day 4 session today hardly 256 people are coming so this is a very less and this is for the community session you know instead of wasting here and there your time and money come over here i'm teaching you i'm teaching you with respect to all the things uh, that is one of my request uh, so keep sharing okay uh, push it in everybody's platform linkedin whatever facebook whatever you want okay wherever are you there i'm not telling you to just go and sit and now and do it no wherever you are in that specific platform let it be instagram twitter wherever you want try to push it it will definitely help the community because whenever you share knowledge trust me you'll be quite amazing right uh, at one point of time in linkedin 2019 you know september i had only 900 followers now i had 130k followers this is all because of sharing of knowledge okay so thank you one doll this was it from my side have a great day ahead keep on rocking keep on learning never give up always try to help others and please do make sure that you subscribe my channel the hindi channel link is also given over here in the chat uh that is it from my side I will see you all in the next session that is tomorrow where we'll discuss about ANN and CNN have a great day